Well, let's get into it. Let's talk about the Canon SureShot WP-1, a camera that shoots unlimited film-like photos because it's a film camera. This camera was uh, introduced in 1994 and is the latest addition in my camera lineup. In fact, it's the only new camera I purchased in 2023, first debuting in my Pacific Northwest video. I mean, in fact, I bought it specifically for that road trip. Why? Well, the main draw of this camera is that it's marketed as waterproof. And it ain't too hard on the eyes either. I mean, shit. If I was single and desperate, anyway, waterproof. That's probably what the WP stands for in Canon WP-1, not Canon wipe once. But uh, how waterproof is this camera exactly? Well, I'm not gonna dunk it in the turlet to find out myself. I do imagine it can handle most conditions. In fact, after flipping through the manual, it does say that total immersion in the water is not a good idea. The film chamber itself is not water sealed. But if you and the bros are splashing around in the kiddie pool this summer, it should be fine. The sister camera, the Canon SureShot A1, is waterproof to something like five feet, I believe. You can tell because it's the depression version of the WP-1 gray handle grip instead of vibrant and fun orange. So if you're looking for a review of the Canon A1, this is not it, though I do imagine the cameras are somewhat similar. Whatever though, how good is this camera in practice? How do the photos look? Let's find out. My uh, BBQ FF Caleb was getting married in a week and it was necessary for some bro time before I never see him ever again. So tired and overworked, we collectively said, F it, we ball. And we headed out to the mountains in search of some photography. But instead we found brotherhood and the power of friendship. With uh, no time to waste and plenty of direct sunlight to flash my unexposed film, I loaded up some Cinestill BWXX after a very satisfying pop from the back door latch. This is what the uh, film loading chamber looks like. It's an automatic camera, so you just need to unwind enough film to reach the other side and uh, close the back and the camera will do everything for you. Uh, according to the manual, this camera can take anything between 25 to 3200 ISO film. Kind of crazy how far film technology has come and then was subsequently abandoned. So, the photos. They ain't bad. This camera is rocking a nice 32mm 3.5 lens, which I kind of appreciate for being a little bit wider than the standard 35mm. I have heard rumors online that this camera automatically overexposes your film by one stop to account for underwater lighting. However, I do think that those rumors are somewhat unsubstantiated, especially because this camera can't even go underwater. I mean, yeah, it can. Technically everything can, but like, should it? Uh, the lens is sharp enough, I think. It isn't gonna win any awards, but it'll get you where you need to go with a smile on its face and an abstract blank expression on yours because you haven't seen your shots yet and it's film, so you don't know. They could be totally f***ed up looking. Obviously, here I was shooting in bright ass daylight, so the lens was closing down automatically a little bit, which is where its strength truly lies. I have shot in situations where the lens was forced to be open at 3.5 and yeah, it's a little smeary. Lens coma, I think is the technical term for it. Dreamy, impressionistic, and artistic is the positive spin some people will put on it. Anyway, uh, this photo isn't half bad. The lighting is good, and I guess some pilot up there was doing airplane donuts behind the subject. Why is there always Nazi graffiti on stuff? It's one of those moments I'm supposed to tell you not to. Yeah, but that's why we work. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't tell me not to. 
The uh, camera itself is nice and lightweight, even with film loaded. Perfect for those locations where you have to force yourself through miles of dense tumbleweed. I was gonna go shoot that, but uh, it is being heavily guarded. So uh, how does this camera fare in operation? You basically have four settings on your front dial here. You have off, which should be pretty self-explanatory. And if it's not, you are certainly gonna struggle with the rest of this video and probably the rest of life. In bold highlighted text, you also have auto, which is probably the mode you are looking for. It will auto expose for you and of course auto focus. So yeah, I don't know. It basically just does everything for your lazy ass. It'll even detect if flash is needed for the scene and then set it off if necessary. Um, other settings that you have here on the dial are flash where it forces the flash to go off. And then of course you have no flash where the flash will not fire. So that's kind of nice to have the option. It's not one of those cameras that forgets your flash settings every time you turn it on and off. I mean, frankly, if I can remember my sixth grade locker combo 42069800085, then the very least a machine can do is remember if the flash was on or off. You know what I mean? The uh, actual mechanism that turns the camera on is pretty damn instant as well. You basically just flip the switch and it's ready to pound one out. So I uh, was making mac and cheese the other day and um, yeah. I was also making Effie's food the other day at the same time just because, you know, sometimes you have to go fast. I had to leave for a, a doctor's appointment and it was, you know, but um, <clears throat> I accidentally spilled some of her food in my mac and cheese and now I, I feel a little weird. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Did you eat it? I mean, you ate the mac and cheese cat food. That's fine. I can drive still. With uh, nowhere to go but up, especially after whatever the hell Caleb just confessed to me, things only got better at the next location, an old clinic or hospital, I suppose. I wouldn't know. I haven't been to one in decades. While, yeah, the place was definitely haunted, that was only more reason for me to pop inside for a quick shot, which Caleb was too afraid to do. I am just like Jason. Anyway, after a cold indoor breeze and clown music in the distance for some reason, I took this photo, which definitely brought out the drama. Using this camera is pretty simple in practice, and if you've ever used another point and shoot, you can pick this one up pretty easily, I think. To take a photo, you can half press the shutter and then hold it to lock focus on something in your scene specifically, if you'd like, and then commit to a full press when you wanna take a photo itself. Pretty standard stuff, if you ask me, but this isn't a large format video. The uh, viewfinder itself is pretty large if size is something that matters to you or your girlfriend. Inside the viewfinder is a green lamp, which either turns on or it doesn't. If it does, that means it was uh, able to lock focus on your subject. And if it flashes really quickly, that means it's going to use the flash. If it does not illuminate, I guess it's likely having difficulties locking onto focus. You can still take a photo if it doesn't turn on though. It's just kind of a you know, it's kind of a gamble at that point. The closest that the Canon WP-1 can focus is about one and a half feet away or like four and a half cigarette packs if you're European. For close-up photography, which this camera is capable of, you'll have to switch the front dial here to the flower and then hold it in place and then compose in the viewfinder using the lower parallax correction lines. Apparently uh, the flash will always fire for these close-up shots. I guess you can just cover it with your hand if for some reason you're endowed with a third arm. Speaking of focusing, I have put about 
four rolls through this camera and none of them have missed focus. So I guess that's good. Unless you're like a blurry image for some stupid ass reason. Apparently there is Canon's smart AI autofocus built in. So the camera is basically Skynet, but uh, according to the manual, it will still manage to focus on the subject through things like glass, which is a common issue with many point shoots. Sexy. Yeah, cool. Look at all the it's like almost planned. The architecture here. The architecture here was planned. <laughs> Put your two Nikons on, around your neck. You look like that guy from uh, Apocalypse Now. Remember the photographer? Oh yeah. At the end, he had like six Nikons around his neck. Should I have like a yeah <laughs> a cigarette? He too? knows what he's talking about, man. <sighs> Kinda of in the mood for tuna. Anyway, uh, whilst out on the dusty highways of Bakersfield, it was time for our lunch break, of which we're legally required to take by the state of California. So we annihilated some downright filthy barbecue because after all, we're the meat amigos. But barbecue ain't nothing without bouncing around on some uh, dirt roads afterwards and then throwing up in your mouth. So we found a road up in the mountains to go shoot and at the end of it was a house that was clearly crushed by something huge. Like maybe Godzilla's absolute dumb truck of an ass. I don't know why that came across my mind, but whatever, we're here and now you know about it, I guess. There was also a turn of the century industrial age bong. Okay, uh, this shot is quite good, very contrasty and well exposed. Honestly, it might be a powerful portfolio pop and banger. I'd say uh, camera wise, this is definitely one of the better feeling ones. Sure, it kind of looks like a toy for babies to chew on, but the grade of plastic on it is actually quite smooth. It's like if T-Max 400 was plastic, if that makes any sense at all. I don't know, it's a nice feeling camera is what I'm trying to say, but I've never really been good with words or photography. Does this camera fit in your pocket or even more fun, your ham wallet? Yeah, it can, but not really. That's sort of the uh, downside of the Canon WP-1. It is a little bit bigger than, I guess, a bunch of the other point shoots, but it's not by much. Enough to where it's really not pocket accessible though. If we're talking about the negatives for this camera, it is worth mentioning also that there is no cover for the lens glass or lens plastic. Regardless, it is constantly exposed, so I could see it getting scratches and, you know, other stuff on it quite easily. The outer ring on it here is raised a little bit to protect the lens, but that isn't going to stop the assortment of mini corn dogs in my bag from greasing up the lens, you know what I mean?
enough black and white. The sun was setting and it was time to see what this camera can produce with uh, with color film. So I loaded up some Kodak Basic Bitch 400 and we pulled into an old gas station conveniently located on a street named after my reputation in college. Oh, I wasn't recording any of that. Are you kidding me? All right, well, I basically took the BWXX out of here and put in Portra 400 and it ripped the uh, sprocket so it was kind of a pain in the ass to load. Okay, great, now you're all caught up. This location was cool for sure, but Porta Potty 400 isn't really my favorite film stock. The colors are fine, but they do lean more pastel than punchy oftentimes, and I don't know, I find it hard to get my signature brown tone look with it. Smells like burnt popcorn. Do you smell that? The uh, flash on board the camera isn't too bad if you want to use it. I'm not much of a flash guy myself, at least not since I got rid of my trench coat, but I decided to try it on the camera here anyway. That night we uh, checked into our motel and just took it easy. I did pop off a shot of my like tiny little single bed in the corner, which was right next to Caleb's much more comfortable and bigger queen size bed. And I, I don't know, I think it turned out pretty good. The next morning, honestly, things were off to a pretty rough start. I was hung over from the devil juice the night prior and Caleb's tire was punctured and totally flat. Hopping from one tire place to the other, it eventually was rectified and I popped off a few photos here and there that I, I don't know, I guess they're fine. The lighting wasn't anything worth shooting, but old dumbass Jason still shot it anyway. Anyway, uh, we arrived at our final location for the outing, an abandoned school that, by the looks of it, was going to be a total goldmine of photography. But 
I think I kind of let myself down here a little bit. Sure, yeah, I was looking like I was about to be nominated for People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive in the High Biz Vest. But underneath every hot guy's exterior is sadness for their art, maybe? I don't know. I just feel like I probably could have done this location better. Some folks online have made the claim that the lens on the WP-1 casts a little bit of a, um, I guess a warmer tone to your images to account for underwater or wet overcast conditions. But just like the overexposure thing that we covered earlier, I do think this is a little bit of internet horse hockey. I mean, Portrait 400 is a bit of a warm stock already and the WP-1 definitely leaned into that, but I don't think the lens has any significant color cast. Uh, this shot is the best of the set, a set that undoubtedly could have been better, maybe without all the graffiti or the active wasp nest right behind me, but, but hey, what can you do? I guess you can burn the whole place down. Uh, this one may even be a portfolio shot. I can't really remember specifics of that day because of the mind-wiping Satan potion, but I think here, due to the heavy backlit scene, I might have locked focus and exposure on the interior lighting and then framed the camera afterwards while half pressing the shutter, which ended up working pretty well, I think. The uh, camera did seem to open up to 3.5 on this one, so it's not really the sharpest photo, but whatever. The impressionist smeary brown look matches the environment pretty well. Uh, alternatively, on this separate interior, I ended up using the fill flash uh, I forced it on to counter the backlighting, and I think it looks quite natural. Other than all that, what is there really to say about this camera? I got mine for uh, about $115, if I remember correctly, and it was in really good condition. And it takes a CR123A battery, which is pretty common amongst point and shoots. Maybe not the most tasty battery in existence, but I have a bunch of them for other cameras, so at least that's convenient. To me, this camera strikes the same issue that I had with the Yashica T4 and was ultimately why I ended up selling that camera. There is simply no way to play with ISO or exposure. And if you're anything like me and you don't shoot any of your film at box speed because following the rules is for Boy Scouts, then this camera is going to present some challenges. You uh, can't shoot HP5 at 1600 or Cinestill 800T at 400, two things I love to do constantly for 35. 250D is another film stock that I love, but it rarely ever comes with a DX code, much less an accurate DX code. Because because typically it is hand rolled, which pretty much just leaves Portra 800 and T Max 400 as the two film stocks that I use quite a bit that I can actually use with this camera, unless I start using DX code stickers, which I'm not about to do. If I can't even remember to bring the shutter release cable when I'm shooting large format, I'm certainly not gonna remember to bring the DX code stickers every time I wanna shoot this camera. I suppose because of that, this camera will be used for you know special occasions. It won't be the first one I grab most times, but it will certainly come in handy for those days when things are a bit rough and tumble, like unpredictable weather or even camping in the rain, which seems to happen to me a lot. All that paired with the fact that it kind of looks like a fish price toy for babies to learn about photography. I'm not 100% sure that this camera is going to be a keeper for me long term, but you know what? At the end of the day, at least it's prettier than the Minolta Weathermatic. Um, well, I guess that's a wrap. Do you want to go get something to eat? Yeah, dude, I'm really, really hungry. I think there's a in and out right just down the street. Um, okay. I also kind of have to use a litter box, so I think uh, we should just get going. The what? The restroom. What'd you say first? I said restroom. Motherfucker, you said litter box. <laughs>